Good evening. Bless your name, God. As you come in, tag, share, and invite someone to join us. It is my desire for this to be a weekly gathering. Hey, sis. Uh, a weekly gathering of teaching and sharing. So as you come in, tag, share, and invite someone. Thank you so much for entrusting me with these next 30 minutes or so. Bless your name, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word, God. We make room for you, Daddy. We make room for you, Daddy. Please share, tag, and invite someone. We are going to get started here in the next minute or so. I know it's been a while since I have been on social media live. Hello, hello, hello. Please tag, share, and invite someone. Let me know that you're there. We are going to only be here uh, about 30, 45 minutes, probably not 45 minutes. I'm going to cut it off and we'll pick it up next week. Um, hey, evangelist, how are you? How are you? Uh, so we will, um, let's get started. Let's pray. I don't, I don't like to uh, tarry with God's word. God, I thank you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for life. I thank you for breath. I thank you for possibility. I thank you for all those who are tuning in now and for those who will tune in. God, I thank you for those who are listening live and those who will uh, listen later, God. I thank you for this word that you gave me last year, God, regarding reset and you're still speaking it, God. I pray that they have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us, the church, God. We seek to get back in place doing what you have called us to do for this season, for this hour. Bless them. Bless them and keep them, God, in Jesus' name. Bless your word, God. Use me for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God can move it over. I'll make room for you, Lord. I'll make room for you. So welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, Tuesday's night. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Tracy, Nicole, Kika, all the others who scrolled up and I can't see your name, but welcome. I pray that this word uh, lands on good ground and, and uh, speaks to your heart and to your spirit. And please tag, share, and invite someone as you come in. Uh, it is my goal and I believe God has assigned me to this Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. to share the word with you, uh, to prayerfully get in and out and share and teach the word. And if he gives me the spirit of prophecy while I'm here, I will do that. Um, those of you who know me, uh, you know that he'll drop it uh, and, and I seek to be obedient to him. So as we uh, seek this word, um, I have been off of social media live for, I would say, a year. I don't believe I've done anything live as far as a teaching. I mean, I've, you know, done lives in the backyard or when I was at an event, but not a teaching. And when we came out of 168 hours of prayer last year, it was just very difficult for me to enter this space. And probably about a month or two ago, God started nudging me again. Actually, probably last year during the elections, God started nudging me again. And I, I just didn't want to. Can I be honest? I just didn't want to come back into this space. There was so much out here and so many people. Um, hey, thank you. So many people had uh, entered that space because we were sheltered in and in the pandemic. 
and hey vet let's go and so I just didn't want to be in that space particularly this space where I was hearing so many things taught and preached and ministered that were not accurate they were not accurate and people were saying that this is what the Lord was saying but what I believe the Lord may have been saying it I can't say what if the Lord said something to someone or not amen but what I believe some of those words were for them it wasn't for the masses it was for them individually and so God has just pressed upon me and this is a word for somebody under the sound of my voice. I'm just going to call it out for Andrea and um, amen, God speak, Lord, for, uh, I, <coughs> excuse me, specifically for Andrea and Tracy. God is even saying, use your gifts, use your gifts to the glory of God. That is what he was dealing with me. You have not been using your gift. You have not been using your teaching gift. You have not been using your prophetic gift. Now, in my space where people may inbox me and I pray for them and God gives me a word and I call them. And in my space, I'm ministering in my little sphere. I was still ministering and teaching and doing those things. However, my voice, I'm called to the body of Christ. I'm very clear about my calling. I'm very clear about my assignment. My assignment is to create safe spaces for men to be ministered to by other men. However, my call is to the body of Christ. Good evening, Kashawn. Thank you for joining us. Please share, share tag and invite someone. This is a word that I believe in this season for us to understand God is still resetting. And somewhere we've missed this understanding that God is still resetting. He is resetting our lives. He is resetting ministry. He is resetting family. He is resetting everything in this land. The Bible says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But yet we come to a mountain named Jesus. We come to a place that cannot be shaken. It cannot be moved. And that's what many of us need. Many of you need. You have been shaken through this pandemic, through loss, through loss of jobs, loss of family members, loss of income, just all of these different things. And you're like, what am I to do? God said, let me reset you. Let me reset you. Have you ever bought a ring that had to be set it had to be set between the prongs. That's the type of resetting God's doing. He wants to put you in the place of purpose. Good God Almighty. Hello, Sister Rachel. Hello, Alicia. He wants to put you in a place of purpose. And I know you're saying, well, I have that at home. But I'm telling you, God wants to put his hand on you and put you in a place of purpose. He wants to set you in a firm foundation. He wants to do it. And many of you have uprooted yourselves from where God has set you. You left because of offense. You left a relationship. You left a job. You left the church. You left because of offense. You left because you felt you weren't being used. You weren't being heard. But God said, I need to reset you. Because from that place, hear me, beloved. He's going to launch you. He's going to launch you. But you've got to get where he can set you. I'm telling you, there is a way, there is a way to go and to do things as believers in Jesus Christ. And so many of us unknowingly, innocently, some of us purposefully have just allowed ourselves to be taken out of our set, taken out of, of where we have been set. And so it is still reset time. So in March of last year, in March of last year, God gave me a word and he said he was resetting. He was resetting every system in this country and in this world. That was family. That was, and that includes marriage. He was resetting the medical kingdom, the, the business and government. He was resetting everything that dealt with money. He was resetting education. He was resetting the church and religion. He was resetting. But we missed it. 
we missed it. It was something that was going around and you would hear everybody say it. And, and I, you know, we take no credit for our prophetic gifts or who we are in the body and the kingdom of God. But God said he was resetting. And guess what? He's not done. And the reason you know he's not done is because things have not started to flow consistently in your life in your church, in your home, in your marriage, in your family, in your health, there is a stagnation that is going on because we have not allowed God to do the work that he came to do in each of our lives individually. Somebody say, set me, Lord. Set me, Lord. All of us need a new set, a new reset, a new charge. Hey, April. Hey, Chrissy. Bless you. Thank you for joining us. Please tag, share, and invite someone. We will be here every Tuesday. The Lord says the same at 8 p.m. from a teaching from the Lord. But God wanted me to start where I stopped last year, talking about reset. So as we come to this place of reset, Last year, as we came together in prayer for 168 hours of prayer, prophetically we prayed and we spoke during that time that we did not believe that God had brought, at that time we were calling it the coronavirus, that God had not brought this thing into the land. But for some reason, beloved, he allowed it. Why did he allow it? Why did he allow it? God started, God reaffirmed, reconfirmed and confirmed his word because I'm resetting. The thing about resetting, you can have a, a soft reset or you can have a hard reset, right? Right, right. You can have a hard one or you can have a soft one. And many of us, we force God to do a hard reset in our lives. He's a gentle God. He's a loving God. He really don't want to have to whoop you, right? He really don't want to have to get with you. He really don't want to have to deal with you the way that he's dealing with you. He wants to be gentle. The Holy Spirit is gentle. He's loving. Now, people can be hard in their times that God will be hard on us. Sometimes his word will cut us. The Bible is clear that it's, it can be a double-edged sword, right? But God truly wants to love us into conviction, into wholeness, into victory. Glory to God. He wants to love you into that. He wants to usher you. You've been to a, 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 a concert. You've been to a church where they have ushers. You've been to events where they have ushers and there's a seat for you. God wants to usher you into your set place. Good God Almighty, I heard the Lord say that. He wants to usher you into your set place. You have a set place, but you got to let God reset you. Pastors. You got to let God reset your church. We should not be coming back into the church with business as usual. It should not be the same church that we left last March, last July, last November, and we're coming back and everything is the same. This was a time for us to get in the presence of God. This was time for us to hear God. What is it that you would have for me to do? And guess what? His plan was for it to be different. I'm not saying you're supposed to be swinging from the chandeliers and creating productions and, and, and no, 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 no. But use your gifts, beloved. I came into this saying, God is looking for us to use our gifts to advance his kingdom, to advance his kingdom. And that was the conviction that he put on me. You're not using your gift. Quit asking me to do this. Quit asking me to do that. Quit asking me to bless this and to bless that. You're not using your gift. You're not using your gift, your administrative gift, your prophetic gift, your teaching gift. You're not using it. You're not using it. You're not evangelizing. You're not using, you're not using the fruit of your spirit to build and advance my kingdom. So cut it out. <laughs> cut it out. So as we look at this reset. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says the secret things belong to the Lord. The secret things belong to the Lord, but the things that are revealed and are disclosed belong to us. 
The things that are revealed, that are disclosed, belong to April. They belong to Yvette. They belong to Sissy. They belong to Andrea. They belong to Marquia. They belong to Kashawn. They belong to everyone under the sound of my voice. The things that he reveals belongs to you. The secrets that he discloses belong to the children of God. He can't get them to you because you won't sit still. You won't let him reset you and get all that old junk out the way. Behold, I do a new thing. Do you not see it? Do you not see it? Nothing, nothing in this earth will ever be the same after this pandemic. But you keep trying to put new wine into old wine skins. You keep trying to do stuff the same way that you was doing it in 2020, 2019, 2015. It's time for a new thing, the Lord says. Ask him. Ask him. Reset me, Lord. Set me in my place and show me what my assignment is in the kingdom for right now. For such a time as this. This is what the Lord is saying. God is doing a new thing. He goes on to say in that Deuteronomy 29, so that we may do all the word of the Lord. He reveals things so that you'll know what to do. This thing on reset, God revealed it last year. And if you're honest with yourself, have you allowed God to reset you? Have you allowed him to reset you? Have you allowed him to show you a new way? To present a new revelation? Have you allowed him to deal with character and nature? Have you allowed him to do that? No, what happened in this season was people went their own way. Watch my hands. People went their own way and they start doing their own thing and thinking the way they want to think. And I'm the one that's right and you're the one that's wrong and I'm talking to both sides. And what did it do? It brought division into churches, into families, into marriages, in the body of Christ. Because left to our own devices, even though you have 510 people preaching to you every day, good God Almighty, you're on social media every day, when we were heavy in this thing and, and sheltered in, we, we went to our own devices. And so here we are today. When... I talked about having to do, please tag, share, and invite someone. We, we, have, we have to do a, a set, a reset. And sometimes with your computer, my computer's right here. Sometimes you have to do a reset because it's sluggish, because it's slow, because it's gotten a virus. Uh-huh, it's gotten a virus. And it's not operating correctly. It's not operating correctly. And the same is true in our soul, in our spirit, in our mind, our will, in our emotions. Something's gotten in there. False teachings, false prophets, false prophecies, incorrect um, interpretation and teachings of the word. All of these things have gotten into our spirit. And God is saying, I need to reset you. And guess what? This was before the pandemic. Because if you remember, the Lord allowed me to teach that the corona in, in the earth is when the moon blocks out the sun. When we have an eclipse and the light that shines from behind the moon with the sun being pressed up against the moon, that circular light is the corona. And the Lord said, you have obscured my light. You have obscured my sun. The sun has been obscured by darkness. Good God Almighty. Darkness of sin, darkness of pride, darkness of opinion, darkness of you wrong, and because I'm right, you got to be wrong. Darkness in the church, in the pulpit, in the pews, in the parking lot, in our souls, in our spirits. You got to be right all the time. What is that? Darkness. 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 And God said, I allowed this thing to come. And so there had to be a reset. He wanted to use this time for us to be reset. So we're starting with this Tuesdays with Tuesday at 8 p.m. on Tuesdays. We're starting where we left off. So some resets are hard, are soft. They're, though they're inconvenient, you don't always lose a lot with a soft reset. It's temporary because... If the problem isn't truly fixed, 
it's going to shut down on you again. It's going to, problem is going to revisit you again. It, it will, uh, you, you will have a connection for a moment. I hope somebody's following me in the spirit. Yvette, Andrea, those who know me, follow me in the spirit. There will be an opportunity for it to revisit because you didn't clean out all the negative files. You didn't clean out your negative way of thinking. You didn't allow God, while he's trying to reset us, to, to re reset our thinking, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. To put down an old thing that wasn't doing us any good or an old person, an old man, an old woman. I'm not talking about age. Somebody that should have been out your life. You didn't, you didn't let them be moved and, and, and displaced from your soul and your spirit. So what happens? That thing rises up again. But God wants to do a reset. Listen, 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 listen. Whether it's your computer system whether it's your phone, whether it's a, a system, a church, God wants us to come out of our stupor and our sluggishness. And I know what you're saying, but I'm doing it. I'm moving it. I'm moving and shaking. I'm making things happen. See how this is happening? See how that is happening? I left this and look what God is doing. I'm telling you, there's still a part of you that's sluggish. And if you're honest, there's still a part of you that's sluggish, that's slow. You don't hear God like you used to. Glory to God. You don't hear God like you used to. Yeah, you can't get into his presence as quick as you used to. As much time, good God Almighty, as much time as we had last year to be sheltered in. Even now, just not necessarily just willy-nilly, going everywhere we want to go, free as we want to go without a mask. <clears throat> we had all that time. But we weren't seeking God. See, see. Let me let me say this: what the church thought. I love pastors. Y'all know I have a ministry to pastors. I I train their leaders. I train their leaders to learn how to walk alongside of your pastors and be their Aaron and their her and to lift their arms up. But pastors did not. Many, not all of them, did not take advantage of that time to be out. We were anxious. We were anxious. We were fretting. We were complaining. Why we got to do this? Why are we going to do that? What is God? Absolutely always ask God, what are you doing? Always ask God, what are you saying in this time and in this hour? But are you demanding an answer? Or are you waiting to hear what the Lord is saying? I incline my ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And to be still, to hear him. But we, we wanted so quickly to get back in the church. And we got back in. And, and unfortunately, in, in many instances, the virus spread, unfortunately. And, and in a lot of cases, you were being careful. But we came in with some situations. Regulations were in place. Things were in place. But yet and still, you were hit. Not blaming anyone. Not bringing condemnation on anyone. But God is saying, be still to know. Be still to know. God is looking for a reset. Hear me, men and women of God. I almost don't like that saying, new normal. Because it, it's been misused so much. But there is a new way that God needs for us to do life and to do ministry. To do fellowship. There's a new way and you got to tap in and listen, your way ain't going to be my way and my way ain't going to be the next person's way. And this church's way ain't going to be that church's way. But God is looking for you. There are some things that are going to stay true to the church. Glory to God. But it is OK. It is OK to do a new thing. It is OK. It is OK to stretch. It is OK to see and have a different vision and go for it. It is okay. It is okay for you to start that business. It is okay for you to have marketplace ministry. It is okay. It is okay. I come against the spirit of fear. I come against the spirit of fear and I release power, love, and a sound mind. God, download the strategy to everyone under the sound of my voice. It is okay. You are not too young. You are not too old. You have not been single too long. Glory to God. You have not been in that marriage that's not healthy too long for you to do something new. Get counseling. 
Pray fast. Glory to God. Try it again. Hallelujah. It's not too late. It's not too late. Glory to God. So some of us, is God's going to have to do a hard reset on you. He's going to have to strip. See, if you let him do the soft one, <laughs> if you let him handle you now, he won't have to strip everything away. Every file, <laughs> every save file, every hidden file. He won't have to do that. He won't have to bring you down to the foundation of how you bought the computer. How you came into this world. But for some of us, that's what he's going to have to do. Because you're hard-headed. Because you're stubborn. Because you're stiff-necked. Because you're full of pride. You don't want nobody to tell you nothing. You don't want nobody to correct you. You don't want to submit to nothing. Or submit under nobody. Submit yourself and your gifts. Go somewhere and submit yourself. Or God's going to do a hard set on you. He doesn't want to do that. He said, I've given you time. I've given us time. He's given us time. He's given us time. A year and a half, he's given us time. And he's saying, I'm still resetting with you. Sit still and let me do the work that I need to do in you. And when I do it in you, I'll do it in your marriage. When I do it in you, I'll do it in your children. When I do it in you, I'll do it in your community. When I do it in your community, I'll do it in your church. I, listen, stop. I child bullshit. The Lord, stop praying that God deal with your pastor and let God deal with you. Stop praying that God deal with your spouse and let God deal with you. Because it's you he's trying to do a reset in. And you come in. With your stuff refreshed, good God Almighty, and built up, hallelujah, and your system cleaned out. I'm not talking about just a fast to flesh your digestive system. I'm talking about cleaning your system out, the way you think. The way you think, the way you handle people, the way you talk to people. Now listen, 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 listen. We're all guilty. We're all guilty. We'll all miss it. But I'm talking about when this is your regular flow. When you just stank all the time. When you just mean all the time. God wants to reset that. He wants to reset that. And if he has to take you down to not and rebuild you back up, that's what he'll do. But I'm here. Hear me. That is not what God wants to do. There's some people that you need to go say I'm sorry to. There's some people that you need to go say forgive me. That needs to happen. That's a part of the reset. Cleaning stuff out. Good God Almighty. So when he starts to, to, to break things down and he's flushing that thing out. Glory to God. You, There's room. The song that we play, I'll make room for you. I'll make room for you. To prepare for you. Holy Spirit, so that you can live in me without clutter. Without a bad attitude, God does not want to do a hard reset on you. But God is coming to reset. Please tag, share, and invite someone when you come in. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. And guess what? You want to be used. And he wants to. He wants to use you. He loves you too much to let us be out here just, you know, haphazard. Haphazard. You need the uh, listen, listen. You need a pastor. You you a believer in Jesus Christ? You need a pastor. TD Jakes is not your pastor. You don't live in Dallas and you don't go to the Potter's house. He's not your pastor. You need a pastor. You need somebody who's watching over your soul. I don't care where you go. Just get under a pastor who's watching over your soul. He's resetting the way we think about this thing. This is this is part of the challenge. The Holy Spirit told me to just say this. When most of us got saved, we came to a man. We came to the pastor. We joined the church. But we were supposed to be coming to God and God alone. And that's where we missed it. Because we keep looking at a man. We keep looking at a church. Instead of looking at God who is the church. And he's given us the church. And he's given us pastors. Who are just as flawed as us. Watch my eyes. Just as flawed as us. But we want grace for us. But we don't know how to extend to the men and women of God who watch over our soul. We don't know how to extend them grace. 
Oh, God, I know I'm helping. I know I'm saying something. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Linda. Hey, Karen. Please tag Sharon and invite someone. We're talking about God resetting us to prepare us to receive. Somebody say, when I let God reset me, I'm going to receive. Re to receive requires in this season a reset. To receive in this season requires you allowing God to reset you. To reset your way of thinking, your way of living. It requires it. It's necessary. It could be exercising. It could be eating right. Glory to God. It could be how you treat people, how you talk to people. Where does God, for some of us, it's a complete overhaul. It's a complete reset. But this is what he desires to do. To get rid of the old, the old memories, the things that plague you. The things that tell you, oh, you can't do that. You tried that before. Oh, you ain't no good at that. The devil is a lie. To get rid of old memories. Listen, I don't even allow people from back in the day to call me stuff that they used to call me. Stop letting people call you pookie and brown sugar and all that. No, I ain't that no more. I've been reset. I, I, I'm not that. Don't try to take me back to old and weak and miserable ways. Glory to God. God has done a new thing in me, and he's yet resetting me. God is still resetting the systems of this world, and that includes us. That includes us. So as we, we think about this, God is so patient and loving with us. I'm telling you, he does not want to be hard with you. He doesn't. He doesn't want to have to keep hitting your head up against the wall. He doesn't want you to have to keep going around the mulberry bush. He doesn't want you to have to return to this thing. In the scripture, she says, he says, you will see this no more because he will remove it. There's some things God is going to remove, but there are some things God needs for you to remove. There's some things God needs for you to remove. Ah, he's not going to remove that thing. He's not going to remove that man. He's not going to remove that temptation because he's told you, he's given you, he's given you the way of escape. He's reset. He literally has told you exactly what to do, but you won't do it. He's told you exactly how to handle that situation, but you won't do it. Pride won't let you do it. Fear won't let you do it. I don't know. You tell me. What is it? But God, God wants to reset your world. God desires to reset your life. Hear me. This is like bubbling up in my spirit. God wants to reset your world. He wants to change how you see yourself. You are great. What, what, what part? Help me to understand. Help me. Is God great? Give me some thumbs up if God's great. God's great, right? Uh huh. God's great. And is God not in you? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So why don't you see yourself as great? Because somebody told you, you can't, you can't call yourself great. I can't because Christ is in me, the hope of glory. God has gifted you. He's blessed you. He's resetting. He's resetting. Let me not get on that. That might be a whole nother topic. So we are missing this opportunity for God to reset. We are missing this opportunity for God to reset. We're missing it because of pride. We're missing it because of arrogance. We're missing it because we're ignoring everything that's happening around us. We're ignoring it like it's not happening, like it's all a lie. But it's right before our eyes. You have veils. You ain't gonna like what I'm about to get into saying, but you have your eyes have been veiled because of pride. Your eyes have been veiled because you got to be right about everything. You think that who you follow and who you listen to and who you learn from and the theorists and this person and that person, that they're the only people that write. Why are right? The only reason you think they're right is because you're all saying the same thing. And the minute somebody comes in and brings conflict or ripple into what you think is right, then they got to be cut off. They got to be argued with. They, they got to be canceled. The devil is a lie. Speak the truth in love. 
Speak the truth in love. John the Baptist, declare loud and spare not. Yes, speaking in love, speaking in love. Don't back down. But God needs for you to understand in this season what he's doing. So let me get to this. I asked the Lord, I said, um, I said, Lord, what is the sign that you will give us that the reset is finished? Because certainly we thought maybe around March or April, March, somewhere in there, things were cool. We could start traveling again, living. Then everything fluctuated again. I said, Lord, what is the sign? This morning, the Holy Spirit answered me. And he said, this will be the sign that my reset is finished in your life and in the systems of this world. When things, when there is a release and an unhindered flow. Let me say that again. When there is a release and an unhindered flow. It won't be this. It won't be this up and down, this fluctuating. The numbers are up today. The numbers are up tomorrow. I got, I'm, I'm doing well this week. I'm jacked up next week. I'm, I'm doing well this month. I need to borrow money next month. When there has been a release, when you have received God's reset in your life, in your church, in your ministry, in your business, when the government, see, this is where it gets a little tricky because, because God has been patient. Good God. Oh my. God has been patient with those who sit in high places. He's been patient. He's been patient. The word says that God is patient, not wanting any of us to stumble, but for all of us to come to the knowledge and the truth of him. He's been patient. He's been patient. But this is how we're going to know when there's been a reset, when there's been a change in how we think and how we treat people and we prefer people above ourselves and we consider people. He said there will be a release and an unhindered flow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what he said. He said, I said, Lord, I said, Lord, now how I said, now, how can this be? How can this be? Because there's so much division. There's so much division in government and families and relationships in the church and the economy. And as I was saying this, in, in the economy, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And as I was saying this, beloved, it hit me. Those are the systems. We're right back where we started in March. I hope y'all hearing me. God is not done with the reset. And partly because there are human beings involved in this reset and human beings who are stoked in pride. I said, okay, Lord. Okay. I said, Lord, I realize the systems of this world, the kingdoms of this world are being troubled and they're still being reset. I said, I get that God. I said, but the whole, I said, but Lord, what, what is going on? What is going on that we can't seem to get past this, this virus, whatever you want to call it, this pandemic? What, what is it? He said, what did I tell you last May? I said, what you say, Lord? He reminded me. He said, I told you. When this thing returns, not if. He said, when this thing returns, it's going to be worse because of the pride of man. I remember walking outside and I emailed my pastor and whoever else I told. I don't even, I don't think I came on live. I may have posted it. I don't know. But the Lord said it's going to be worse because of the pride of man. The pride of man. Because you don't want nobody to tell you what to do. You don't want nobody to tell you how to live. You don't want nobody to tell you to wear a mask. You don't want nobody to tell you social distance. You don't think what's being said is real. And guess what? All of that's fine. But when we prefer others above ourselves, when we are considerate and consider others before ourselves, we will do the little things to keep everybody safe because God loves everybody. But it is pride. God said it is pride. So when we allow God to deal with our pride, that's the first step in the reset. It's the first step. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says in, in Proverbs 18, week 16, we quote this scripture all the time. Pride comes before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. Actually, that's not what it says. The Bible says 
Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And I started meditating on that last year. I said, Lord, help me with that because we've quoted that wrong. I quoted it wrong. How, what are you saying? He said, when you, you, when you have a haughty spirit, you fall. You can get back up because it's spiritual. The Holy Spirit going to help you with that haughty spirit. He said, but pride, let me, come on, y'all, let me follow you. Follow me right here. You got to stay close. Pride is a character issue. Pride is an attitude. Pride is a choice. The longer you stay haughty, the more prideful you become. The longer you stay in a place that you don't want nobody to correct you, you don't want to submit to nothing or submit to nobody, that's where pride comes in. You don't want to you don't want nobody to correct you, you don't want nobody to pull your coattail. Your husband better not say none, your wife better not say none to you, your pastor, your boss, your manager, nobody. The only person you want to get instruction from is God. And you say things like, "Well, I'm the head of my household." And, and I'm the one that's in leadership over here. And God speaks through me. Well, let me help you. Before you get to that scripture, wives submit to your husbands. It says submit one to another. It's pride. It's pride that misuses the word for your own benefit, which is also very dangerous. Dangerous for you and for those who are receiving from you. It is pride. Pride, pride will blind you. The first step in this reset is to ask God to show me me. Show me me. Show me what is in me that is unlike you, God. Deal with pride. Pride was the first sin. That's what caused Lucifer to get kicked out of heaven. Talk about what he gonna do. God hates pride. God hates pride. He said it comes before destruction. Your pride is destroying you. And let me just drop this right here. Just because you low and you talk real soft and you look down and you don't yell and you don't curse and you don't raise your voice. That don't mean you ain't prideful. I know a whole pride is likened unto witchcraft. Rebellion. Rebellion is birthed out of pride. Aha, let me help you. And so I know I met a whole bunch of demons, witches and warlocks who was full of pride, but they was just as quiet. What looked like meekness. No, you're prideful. You're arrogant. And the longer you stay arrogant, you will move into a state of pride. And pride destroys. At least with arrogance, I can get back up and try it again. I can repent. But you stay in that space, attitude, mindset of pride. You're, the, you're right. Everybody else is wrong. Can I ask you all something? Whatever happened to being able to agree to disagree and we still go on in fellowship together? Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to, why is it that I have to agree with you or someone has to agree with you for us to coexist? I have to agree with your lifestyle. I have to agree with what you're saying for us to coexist. It's pride. Oh, I'm coming after it. If you let me, I'm going to bowl right down your alley with what pride looks like in you. I remember when I was at my previous church at Eastern Star and there was a pastor that was going to, to start a church and everybody thought I was going with him. I thought I was going with him. And, and, and I'm not saying that he's prideful, he's arrogant or whatever. I'm not saying that. But what the Lord said to me was, you can't, you, I need to keep you Tuesday. I ain't looking at what they doing. I need to keep you under pride. So I had to keep my little cute self right there. Though all my friends was going with the, with the other church, I had to stay right there. He said, I got to keep you under pride. Because of these great revelations that I'm showing you and will show you. I'm going to give you, you I'm going to keep you buffeted, young lady. So I'm going to keep you right here. And then when Pastor Hill started the streams, God allowed me to go with him. I'm very clear. Pride lurks at my door. I ain't even trying to act like I don't know it's right there. It would love to get me trapped. But let me tell you what a person who seeks to be humble will do. When they're wrong, they'll say, I'm sorry. When they've missed it, they'll apologize. They'll have godly sorrow. The Bible says that brings about repentance, that wants to make things right. That's humility.
It isn't because of how soft you talk or you don't argue, you don't cuss, you don't raise your voice. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not. Humility is a heart issue. Just as sure as pride is a soul issue, humility is a heart issue. Pride in your heart, yes. But what God wants is a humbled spirit. He wants us to deal with pride in this season of reset. You want to see this pandemic? You want to see this virus be lifted and go away? Ask God to deal with pride in the land. In you and in those around you, I'm telling you, God said it is the pride of man that God has allowed this thing to come back and it came back with a vengeance and that's what he said was going to happen in May and here we are. Thank God the numbers are going down. But the sign that the reset is done is not the numbers going down. The sign that the reset is done is not the virus left the land. The sign that the reset is done is that you change. You've gotten back in position. You've humbled yourself. You've dealt with pride. I'm talking, when I say you, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about all of us. But this pride thing, pride leaves no room to see another person's side, to see other possibilities. Pride, pride, pride. It is pride in the soul and the hearts of people that has allowed this thing to continue. To allow this virus. And listen, I'm not just talking about COVID. I'm talking about the, the virus of, of, of hatred. The virus of greed. The virus of selfishness. The virus of control. The virus of anger. All of that. It is pride. It's rooted in pride. Because you believe. We all have believed at some point in our lives that our way is the right way. I remember years ago, I, I dated a gentleman and I picked up on something in the spirit about this pride thing, some way he was talking. And I asked him, I said, are you the type of person that is your way or the highway? He was like, yeah. I said, all right, peace. I can't do pride. And I'm sure I ain't going to, I almost said something. I sure ain't going to attach myself in relationship to a prideful person. Those of you who are gifted under the sound of my voice, pride is something that always wants to, to, to just come up next to you. Come up next to you, whether it's spiritually or physically in a relationship. You have to be very careful about the spirit of pride. Boastfulness. That spirit. That spirit. The nature of a person that is operating, whether it's the spirit of arrogance that comes before a fall or pride that comes before destruction. Don't connect yourself with somebody full of pride because they're going to bring you down with them. Oh, I'm helping. I'm helping. I know this is good teaching. Listen, let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. Um, if you are not willing to say, I'm sorry or forgive me. You probably got some pride there. If you're not able to take, to give up the right to be right on occasion, short of it killing you or killing your loved ones, it's probably a little pride there. If you got to always be right and always get the last word, might be a little pride there. If you got to debate everything, and if people got to agree with you in order for there to be fellowship, might be a little pride there. I'm here to help. God wants us to deal with this pride. God wants us to deal with this pride that has set itself up in his believers, in Christians, in people in general. And oh my God, in the church. The church is divided. Now, I'm going to drop this here. I'm not here to talk about um, the sin, the you know, uh, the homosexuality or or gay marriage or I'm not here to talk about that. But the two things I want you to hear me: adultery don't hasn't broken up the church, split up the church. Uh, 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 pornography, uh, child molestation, rape, uh, stealing. No, nothing else has brought such confusion into the house of God as this virus and gay marriage. We didn't care if they was going to church, but when they got married, and I get that. I'm not. I'm not here to. I'm not here to talk of to to teach on that. But I want you to understand. 
What is the root of those things? They have a pride parade. I want you to hear me. The reason people are arguing and fighting about what they should do and take the virus, take the vaccination, not take the vaccination, it's pride. And the root of pride is fear. The root of pride is fear. I'm going to say it again. The root of pride is fear. The root of pride is fear. And fear on both sides. Fear on both sides. If you tell somebody you didn't took the vaccination, watch what's going to happen in two years. Your ear is going to fall off. You know, all of this stuff. That's fear. That's fear. To tell people to repent because they voted for somebody, that's fear. Listen, and let me just drop this right here. That we repent for sin, not for who we voted for because we got a vaccination. Watch who you listening to. So hear me. God needs for us to deal with pride. It is pride that you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't do it. It's pride, and it, the root of it is fear. How do I know this? Because everything about what's being talked about is, let me ask you a question. God just gave me this. I, this ain't even in my notes. Tell me a conspiracy theory that brings hope. Tell me a conspiracy theory that's rooted in love and encouragement. And bringing people together in a spirit of unity and harmony. Give me one. <clears throat> Give me one. Because there isn't. The very fact that we are, people are teaching, pastors, preachers, evangelists, prophets, elders. Folk are on these platforms teaching conspiracy theories and using the word. It's pride. Because you've latched on to something. And a little fox then found his way in. Oh, somebody, you ain't going to like what I'm saying, but I know I'm telling the truth. This right here, I know. I ain't judging you because the Bible says even the very elect, if it's possible, will be deceived. But if you are using a conspiracy theory that is being taught, this is something I asked someone. I said, why is it easier for you to believe the extreme of something? than to just let people who just say, okay, I just, you know, I think this is what's safe for me. Why is that? Why is it easier to believe in something that's extreme and something that's rooted in fear and in hate and in separation than something that make it, that's giving people hope and possibility? Why is it easier? It's pride. And the devil, the devil is the father of pride. I'm not saying you're a devil worshiper. I'm not saying you're full of the devil. You love God. But somewhere along the way, you got off. And it's okay. In this reset, just ask God to show you you. I'm asking God to show me me. I'm not exempt. None of us are. But God wants to have an encounter with you. God wants to have an encounter with you with this reset set. God wants to have an encounter with you. And he said to tell you that in this reset, it will feel like, which it already has. It already has the best of times and the worst of times. You remember Charles Dickens' poem, The uh, Tale of Two Cities? It was the worst of times and the best of times. Let me just read that as I wrap this up. The, it says, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom and it was the age of foolishness and lies. It was the epic of belief it was the epic of incredibility. It was the season of light and it was a season of darkness. All of this happening at the same time. It was the spring of hope and it was the winter of despair. He said we had everything before us, but there was nothing there at all. We were, he said, we were all going uh, direct to heaven and then we were all going direct in another way, a short path to hell. The best of times and the worst of times. Last year, in the middle of the pandemic, some people was making more money than they ever made. Some people got more money than they ever got. They was getting $2,400 a month. Some people had not ever seen that. Some waitresses, some grocery store workers. It was the best of times and it was the worst of times. All at the same time. All of these extremes 
were functioning at the same time. And guess what? So it will be. So it will be. This is the comparison of what the world looks like because we are stoked in pride. Many have fallen down in their arrogance and don't even realize it. My God, my God, my God. And God is just saying, just look up. Just talk to me. Ask me. Prayerfully, you fell on your back and you're looking up to heaven. You don't want to be wrong about anything. You don't want to be corrected. And it's a very fearful place. It's, it scares me when people just don't want to hear the other side. They don't want you to even just drop an idea or suggestion. Hey, consider this. Or what do you think about that? It's a very scary thing. It's a very scary thing because you have the big house or you have the fancy car. Or you're making more money or you have a little bit more spiritual or biblical knowledge than somebody else. Oh, honey, God can take all of that away. Pastor Johnson I, I used to say, honey, he can he can take you and leave all your stuff. He can take all your stuff and leave you or he can just take it all. I'm going to add a fourth one. He can leave you here not even knowing that you are a person that has fallen and you, you can be veiled right here and you think you live in the life with all your stuff, with all your so-called wisdom, with all your knowledge. God desires to reset you. He desires to reset me. He desires to reset our family, our communities, our churches. He is still desiring to reset. God said in, in his word, I'm, I, I, that uh, in, in uh, Psalms 37, the Bible says the blameless, the humble will spend their days under and in the Lord's care and their inheritance will endure forever. He said in the times of despair, they will not wither. In the days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. Remember Joseph in Genesis 29? He said, but not so for the wicked, the proud, and the greedy. They will perish. Ask God. Ask him in this season to show you you. Before anybody else has to show you you. The first step in the reset, in the clean out, in cleaning out your systems, in cleaning out the way you think, is God wants to deal with pride. And you may not even know that you've been in pride. But somebody probably told you. But God wants to deal with pride. And he wants to do it in a gentle and loving way. Hallelujah. God don't mind you having all this stuff. He doesn't. As long as we're giving him glory. As long as none of it. We know that it's all temporal. God doesn't mind you dressing fancy. Hey, Michael. Hi, Sister Willis. Hey, Sister Lindsay. God doesn't mind you dressing nice. He don't mind you driving good. But are you bringing your tithes into the storehouse? Are you blessing others with the blessing that he's given you? Are you preferring others above yourself? Are you doing the small things that, that reflect your humility and the grace and the mercy that God has shown you? God is speaking. And as he said last year, he needs for us to get in alignment. He needs for us, and we're going to talk about alignment next week. He needs for us to get in alignment. Ask God to examine you. Ask God to examine you. Then examine yourself. Examine yourself and see. Ask him if there's anything in me that offends you, that is unlike you, God. Take it out. Take it out. Because I want to be more and more like you. And when I talk about pride and, and, and the root of this thing being in fear, it's both sides. It's the people that you better get it. You better get vaccinated else. You better, you better not get vaccinated else. You better believe what I believe else. All of that. It's all fear. It's all pride. And God wants to set us free. He, want us, he wants us to be set free. Listen, I love you with the love, Lord of, love of the Lord. And I just want you to be mindful in this season to guard your ear gates, guard your eye gates, watch who you're listening to. If people are saying and preaching and speaking and prophesying things that do not line up with the word, you need to turn them off. 
anybody telling you to do something that is against the word, that's not in the word, you need to turn them off. I need you to hear me. Anyone that is telling you to, to leave a job, to leave a church, to leave a marriage, to leave a relationship that God ain't told you to leave and there's no biblical context to why you're doing that, you need to, you need to turn them off. You can love them from a distance. You could probably still be friends with them, but they're probably not who you should be taking wise biblical scriptural counsel from. They, they may have just gotten off track just a little bit. But don't allow them to pull you because it's pride. It's pride. It's pride. Balak, we know the story. Balak and Balaam, we know that story. He kept coming to God, asking God, can I say this? Can I say that? God let him go. He let him say it. But it wasn't. And then, and, but then when he got there, he had to say what God said. Some of us, God, I didn't say this earlier, some of the things that we're saying and we're preaching and we're teaching and we're prophesying was not for the body of Christ. It was for you. It was for you. It wasn't for the masses. It was for you. And part of the reason I know it wasn't for the masses is because it doesn't line up with scripture. That was a personal conviction that God wanted to convict you in. But you shared it with everybody. And because of your position, because of your voice, because of your platform, people have listened to you and they've gone in the direction you've told them to go. And the Bible says, woe to them who has bewitched you. Ah, hear me, beloved. Let the Lord speak to your heart today. Let him deal with your soul today. He is still resetting. And he who began a good work in you has promised to perform it until the returning of the Lord. Don't get shaken when the economy dips. Don't get shaken when the numbers go up in, in, with the virus. Don't get shaken. The reason we know that God, you had not allowed God to do the reset in you is because every little thing has shaken you. Every little thing has moved you. And God said, if you let me reset you, if you set in the place that I put you in, just a little while longer, he said, I'm going to perfect everything that concerns you. I'm going to move things out of the way. Stop fretting. Stop complaining. Don't be fearful. Don't be anxious. Don't, don't believe in falsities. Believe in the word of God, the truth of God's word. The truth of God's word. Reset your thinking. Let me, let me, let me end here. Hold up. There is going to come a flow of peace to your household, to your spirit. Yeah. A, the peace of God. Father, I breathe the peace of God over your people. I breathe prosperity over your people. I breathe hope over them. Anything that is coming into their ear gates, their eye gates, that is not building them up in humility, building them up in peace, building them up in prosperity, building them up in, up, up in hope, in the things of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. Anything that comes into their environment, into their sphere of influence that is not Breathing and building the fruit of the Spirit. Remove it. Don't, don't, don't allow God to humble you. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he will lift you in due season. I love you with the love of the Lord. I hope to see you next week. Please tag, share, invite someone. If you felt that this word blessed your soul in any way, uh, feel free to share it. Okay? And we will be back here at 8 o'clock next week. And we're going to be talking about getting in alignment and finding balance in your life. Hallelujah. In this season that you need hope and you need direction and you need insight. Let God reset you. Let him deal with the pride. Focus on the fruit of the Spirit. Don't argue with people. Don't debate people. If God gives you something that you just want to share, but if they don't receive you, shake the dust. But be careful about who you are receiving from. Make sure it aligns with the Word of God. 
God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Bless your people and bless them indeed. Cause your face to shine upon them. Enlarge their territory, God, and grace them with your love, your grace, your mercy, and your favor. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. See you next week.